Let me introduce our next speaker, who's uh, Bjorn Otto Svedrup from uh, Statoil. And he's um, the Statoil's Senior Vice President for Sustainability and member of the Management Committee in the Global Strategy and Business Development Business Area. So thanks a lot. Thank you, and good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. So <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm a Norwegian. I'm 47 years old. I'm a father to three. And I have an electric bike, not a Tesla. <laughs> I also happen to lead the sustainability efforts in Statoil. And Statoil is a company that's an oil, gas, and energy producer. We, each day we, we provide energy to nearly 200 million people. It is actually 170, but I would like that to be 200 million, since, because people should be more efficient the way they, they use our products. So thanks for having this opportunity to share with you some how we actually inside Statoil work to improve ourselves and get ready and stay relevant and possibly even shape the future of energy. So uh, in preparing for this, I, I started to think about something that my, my daddy told me actually many years ago. So uh, is it working? No. So this is me uh, sitting next to my daddy. And he's also my identical twin, so I, I don't know whether it's me on the left or the right side, but, <laughs> <coughs> but that's not important. What's important was uh, the, the guy in the, in the middle here, and he, he's a, a loving father. He loved the outdoors, book, uh, you know, we ran a bookstore, and then he went on to politics. But he kept on saying, remind, telling us about a poem, always. And it, it's a Danish poem, so I made a translation. And, because when preparing for this, I, I, I wanted to share that with you. So he said, pessimist, it's from Pete Hine. And he said, pessimists, I must say, are the strangest of fools. They believe in the opposite of what they hope for. Now, the optimists that life depends on are those who dare to hope for what they believe in. So installing that kind of sentiment of optimism, I think is important, at least goes into me. And actually, inside Statoil, I find a lot of that sentiment. So that's also why we, ahead of the Paris Agreement, you know, advocated very forcefully and strongly and openly, let's get a solid, ambitious agreement in place. We need that. Also, with a, put a carbon price on this industry and others. And, I think we got a, a great uh, agreement, so thanks for that. Of course, there will be ups and downs, but one way of seeing the outcome of that agreement is the following. Today, ballpark numbers, two-thirds of the emissions are related to the way we use energy. 80% of energy is coming from the fossil fuels, so rightly so, fingers are being pointed at us. And also, possibly, the future of energy is about the future of everything else. So, broadly speaking, we need to get, go from a more carbon energy system to a system with something else. Renewables, non-fossil, energy efficient systems, what have you. The pathway would probably be clouded by um, a lot of uncertainties in science and technology, innovations, regulations, and even social behavior. But probably this sets out the direction. And, and if you're in the business, it says the business you're in is going to be in a radical transformation over the next years. So we believe that the winning companies in this will be the companies that are really good at lowering the carbon intensive the existing energy system and also really good at, at accelerating the low carbon solutions. But in the meantime, we need to make sure that which hydrocarbons we use, how we produce them and how we consume them is really, really important. And we dare to speak openly about that. Probably we need to make it a global priority to bring coal down bring really cold down, possibly out as soon as possible, minimize flaring, minimize methane leakages, grow renewables, very, very clear directions on that. 
Of course, the ride is going to be up and down. So one thing that we haven't talked that much about today is that there, are, uh, there, is, there is, I think the, the, this cartoon captures the thing. Probably all of us have been you know, in the streets going with the stroller and this nice lady is coming over. Oh, is it the first? No, it's the seventh billion. <laughs> and, and actually, in energy-wise, it's only six billion because there's one billion people not able to live decent lives. And then we are on a track to add two billion. So there is six and then there is one that needs to get energy and then two more effectively 50% up on people who have, would like to have access to energy over the next couple of decades. And we're going to provide them with that energy while we're going to remove the miracle stuff of hydrocarbons. Because in many ways, hydrocarbons are miracle stuff due to its energy intensity. I just Googled that, but one variable of oil equals eight years of labor of a man. One barrel of oil equals in calorie wise. Isn't that amazing? So we're going to remove the most efficient thing and then double up. So it's challenging, but probably this is what we need to do. So in Statoil, we have some basic beliefs around this. We, we don't debate the science. Let's act upon it. We need to minimize the emissions from our industry, and also accelerate low energy carbon solutions. And preparing for the future, we need to develop um, resilience, meaning profit, cost consciousness, because if you're not in the game, you cannot make any difference. So the business part of sustainable business is really important. Second, optionality, so that you can choose what kind of future you will be part of, and then also agility, Ability to move swiftly, something happens quickly. So zooming in, uh, like now to move to say, okay, so what are we doing? I think we dare to say to come, we come from a position of relative strength. We're among the best, kind of most carbon efficient producers of oil and gas today. Nearly half the level of the world average. And we're quite optimistic because we have not done significant reductions over the last years. More than 1.5 million tons. But we know that we need to get better. So the, the mantra is set targets, deliver on them, set new targets. But being in the oil and gas industry, we have a complex footprint. So our company alone from one country represents nearly a quarter of Norway's emissions. So one way of looking at this is this, it's not a planetary system. This, it's a simple way of telling you about emissions. So remember, we, we, we have like 50 million tons of emissions, very significant. But, and that's a quarter of our, the country's emissions. But it's still only that tiny little blue, blue ball. Because it's the consumers, when the production, oil and gas are being consumed, that most of the emissions occur. We call that scope three emissions and we report on them openly. And then the big red thing, well, it's China. So our emissions, yes, we're big, but it's only 0.15% of China's emissions. I'm saying that not to say that what we are doing is unimportant, rather the opposite, that we need to engage on what we're doing ourselves, what our customers are doing, but also what's happening in the broader world. So we do that by working with the Paris Agreement, advocating for carbon pricing, polluter pays principles, providing technologies, looking at energy efficiency type of thing. But then, for now, also need to zoom in. Let's improve our own business. We need to do that. And how are we doing that right now? On, and on Monday, we're going to the board to share with them the, our climate roadmap. And uh, looking forward to that. And in here, I say, these are the four kind of avenues that we will do. Firstly, unless you understand the challenge and your own position in that, um, you will never be able to act. So we take 200 executives on a deep understanding of climate issues, 
trained 7,000 of our colleagues on sustainability. Then we're moving on to say, let's get new performance metrics. Let's, how would a company look like if you truly embed climate aspects into all your decision making? So it's not only break even, capex, opex, those kind of numbers, but let's say, hey, okay, I like to see the CO2 profile of this project. I like to have it as, as my numbers. My CEO should get the remuneration based on the CO2 performance. Uh, investment manuals needs to reflect carbon intensity type of thing. That's what we're doing now. Those ma things matter. If you're as good as forecasting CO2, as production, as capital, you start to embed the carbon dimension into the way you run a company. And then, no goals. So we are updating the, what we call the statoid book with the policy and also with some fundament fundamentals, non-negotiables. So we decided we're not going to be involved in, uh, we're going to commit to eliminate flaring by a certain point of year, 2030. We're going to stop routine flaring, not going to be involved in that. Methane leakages, that type of thing. Probably that no-go list will have to expand as we evolve around thinking around this. And then at the end, capturing the business opportunities. The transformation, of course, is for us mainly about business. Massive business opportunities are opening up. How do we get positioned for that? So right now we're looking at how could we lower our own footprint along two dimensions, both in our existing business and also grow the renewables. So here, just at the end, a couple of examples. But the picture is actually from our subsea factories. So that's one important thing, remove offshore installations, put the installations on the seabed much more energy efficient. And it's when we consume energy we get, when, where we do the emissions. So some of the things that we are working on is electrification. The biggest field that we sanctioned over the last year is actually going to be run 100% on hydropower. 100% on hydropower. Carbon capture and storage, fuel cells, and ultimately some way or the other, a deep decarbonization, hydrogen-based systems type of thing. We're working along all these lines, different time horizons, both short-term operational procedures, but also longer term. And then also looking at our offshore uh, or <coughs> renewables business, it has grown quite significant over the last years. Uh, this picture, I think, is an amazing picture. And it's, can anyone tell what it is? It's a guy standing inside, the, this is Siemens, uh, inside a rotor blade for an offshore wind turbine. So, so uh, I know that some people say that size doesn't matter. But, but at least we believe that in offshore wind, size matters. So the rotor blade here will be 86 meters. Uh, so add that up. It's, it's uh, big. It goes like this. And uh, so um, yesterday, we started installation at one offshore wind, uh, offshore, um, uh, wind farm up, up north in, the, in British waters. It's uh, going to be uh, providing electricity to some 415,000 uh, Englishmen. And then also we have announced that we we will be providing energy for, um, from floating wind turbines in a couple of uh, years from now. Really exciting things. A and then we also added, hey, let's take it one more step by adding batteries to that to see how could we do both large-scale electricity generation, adding batteries, and could we even possibly see interplay between not only the grid, but also offshore installations and, and new, uh, you know, fossil fuels and renewables. Interesting times, and also we, we launched a manager fund to be curious and look into the future. So for it, us, I think that is exactly the point. Leadership in Statoil is about, of course, it's about making money, but we believe that you need to be able now, in a period of change, to be able to look ahead, have a long-term perspective, and be a bit courageous about 
how, what kind of decisions you're willing to do. We also really believe in curiosity. We don't have all the answers uh, about the future or the solutions. Probably we've been spending too much time discussing things with ourselves. Be open, discuss with others, curious to learn what the future would look like, capture new opportunities, and then at the end of the day, remind ourselves of, of uh, who are the ones that make a difference, and that's, of course, the optimists. So thank you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bjorn.